kind of as long as you want, you know, around an hour and oh, for that. Okay. But if you go over, don't worry. We have, we have until like, you know, an like hour and a half roughly. So go ahead and share okay. your screen and take okay. it away. Oh, sorry. Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Uh, thanks to Professor uh, uh, Eric Rowell for introducing me. Um, the title of my talk today is uh, Representation of Motion Group from Diagraph Witten uh, Topology and the Related Calculation. And this is, talk is based on, on our work joint with my advisor, Professor Zhang Han Wang. Mm -hmm. Uh, here's the plan of this talk. Uh, first, I will show some basics about motion group. And this part is based on the work of Goldsmith. And second, I will talk about a representation of a motion group of link in three sphere uh, coming from diagraph of Eaton, one extended TQFT. And third, I will show the uh, calculation of this representation for special link, torus link, and the fourth, I will try to relate the calculation in the third part with the representation of surface break group also coming from diagraph written theory. Uh, first, I will show some background knowledge about the motion group. Uh, let M be an oriented compact menu manifold. Here, uh, we assume that this L may have boundary and let N be compact subspace of M and N maybe have more than one path connected component. And here are some notations. And here we use HM to denote a group of orientation preserving homeomorphisms on M. And, and here we need to regard this group as a topological group with a compact open topology. And next we use, we use HMN to denote a subgroup of HM such that each element preserves the subspace n. And the next, we use MathCal HM to denote the group of uh, path connected component of HM containing the identity map on M. Actually, it is just a mapping class group of M. And the next, we use MathCal HMN to denote the group of math, uh, path connected component of HMN containing identity map. Actually, it is a mapping class group of the pair M and N. Uh, here's a definition of a motion, motion group. Actually, a motion of subspace, sorry? Excuse me, I just want to uh, uh, make sure I understand. In the previous slide, uh, yeah. if, those, uh, if those N are just a set of points, uh, mm -hmm. So this, uh, you actually define this bridge group, this pi zero HMN will be the bridge group. Is that correct? Pi zero HN? HMN. HMN. Mm -hmm. yeah, if the N is just a set of points, uh, mm -hmm. so, so this, uh, uh, this curl oh, HMN, yeah. that's just a bridge group. Yes, just bridge group, yeah. I see. So the, here, when N is, uh, yeah, please. So here the generalization is that uh, this n can be closed loop, uh, so they will have this braiding among loops or membranes. Is that right, correct? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I think you, Michelle, you didn't say, but when you say n is n points, you want a braid group, you also need m to be the two-dimensional disk. Uh, but this with a fixed boundary. Yeah. So. You know, he didn't say it, you know, but normally, you know, you're supposed to say A, you know, M is a manifold possibly with a boundary and A okay. would be inside the interior of M. Okay. And so then, HM will fix the boundary then? HM will fix the, well, that's actually, he didn't say either, but I think the standard convention, there are, there are choices. The standard convention is normally you fix the boundary of M, and, but you don't have to. So, you know, when you define mapping class group, there are several different versions. One is you, uh, you know, to define the braid group, you take N points inside the disk 
and then you want the oil home is fix the boundary of the disk and then okay. you move the points i think that that's how you recover the the braid group but i think the case will be most interested here would be the case m will be either the three disk or the three sphere and and then n would be a link inside yeah if you and, choose if yeah. you choose M to be a sphere, that's also well. You get, do you get a braid group, or you get something special kind of braid group? It depends on your disk, your two sphere. If your disk all bounding a three ball, that would be like the the braid okay. group. Thing. But see. you can get a two sphere which does not bound a disk. I think that's more interesting. Okay, thank you. Sure, go ahead. Um, here's a definition of a motion. Uh, a motion of subspace N in manifold M is a path F in the group HM such that uh, its starting point F0 is identity map on M and its ending point F1 is inside group HMN. So recall that HM is a group of all the orientation preserving homomorphisms of M. So actually a motion is uh, as a topic. Uh, on M and connecting the identity map and another homomorphism which preserves the subspace N. And we say a motion F is stationary if for any T, I mean, during this isotopy, uh, this isotopy always preserves the subspace N. Mm. And let F and G be two motions. We say F is equivalent to G if the composition between G inverse and F is homomorphic relative to endpoints to a stationary motion. And the composition between two motions is defined by this equation. Here for this guy, this is a composition between two homomorphisms. And next, uh, Goldsmith, Goldsmith proved that the set of equivalence classes of motions of N in M is defined as a bow with a multiplication induced by composition actually forms a group denoted by uh, Maskell M, M, N, just a motion group of N in M. That's a definition of motion group. Mm. Here are two examples for motion group. Uh, when first, when the subspace is a single point, uh, the motion group uh, of P inside the manifold M is just a fundamental group of M with P as, as the base point. And second, uh, when the subspace are in disjoint points and M is a two dimensional disk, so it's a motion group, it's just the M braid group. So uh, motion group can be viewed as a generalization of braid group. Mm. Next, we define important homomorphism partial from the motion group M in N to the mapping class group of the pair M and N by sending the motion to the isotopy of, of its ending point. And mm, according to the definition of a motion group, uh, a motion, uh, the motion group can be identified with, uh, re with relative, home, relative fundamental group. Uh, sorry, I actually interchanged these two subspace. Here, HMN is a topological subspace of HM. I mean, they can be identified uh, as sets. And according to homotopy theory, we have this exact sequence. Uh, here, this, this is a fundamental group of HMN. This is a fundamental group of HM. And motion group is the relative fundamental group of the subspace HM in the whole space HM. And this is a mapping class group of, mapping class group of pair. Actually, it's just a pi zero HMN and this guy is, the last one is the mapping class group, mapping class group of M, just pi zero HM. And these three uh, arrows without, or without notation are all uh, natural inclusions. Uh, for our purpose, we want to consider the motion of a link in three sphere. So we consider the case that M is a three sphere. So when M is a three sphere, its mapping class group is trivial. So the last group is trivial. 
and the fundamental group of HS3 is, uh, is isomorphic to Z more to Z. So we have this exact sequence to characterize the motion group of a subspace in three sphere. Here, uh, this Z more to Z generated by element. Here, I denote this element by bracket two pi because it represents the full rotation of three sphere. And so um, we have this exact sequence to show what is motion group. And for our purpose, we just consider the motions of a link in three sphere, which preserves the orientation of each component of L. So we denote this subgroup by uh, math scale M plus uh, L inside the three sphere. That is what we consider. Uh, here are some examples for a motion group of link. The first one is a trivial link with n components, as this picture shows. And its motion group uh, consists of uh, two kinds of motions, sigma i and the pi. For sigma i, uh, sigma i interchange the i's component and uh, the i plus one component by moving the i's component through the i plus one component. Well, PI interchange these two circles by regarding these two circles as two points and interchanging them together. And this group is also called loop braid group in some literature. Uh, can, I, can I ask a question? Sure, sure. Yeah, so here, do, do you also, can you also include the knot structure on the, on the loop? Uh, I'm sorry, what is uh, uh, can, can you include the, the knot structure? Here, the loop is a, a, a knot, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's what he will do next. Ah, okay. Yes, the answer is yes. Okay, thanks. But uh, maybe, you know, thanks. Uh, so the answer is yes, you know, that's exactly what we are interested in. So we want L to be a link that the components uh, and knots and they are all linked together. But you can already tell from what he described, that's harder to describe because you cannot just arbitrarily exchange two if they are not the same. And then when you say one well, go through the other, that's not well defined either. How do you go through a knot? There are many different ways to go through a knot. Ah, I see. Ah. So, but there is a, that, that's exactly what we want to do. So. I see. Go ahead. Uh, the next example is necklace link, as this picture shows, and its motion group consists of sigma i and s. Uh, similar with the sigma i for trivial link, we move the i's component through the i plus one's component. And for s, s shift the, the components l i along the l c here, uh, we, chain, uh, we move l2 to l1 and l3 to l2 and move Ln to Ln minus one. And the next we move L1 along the lower path to Ln, that is S. So that's a motion group of link, uh, necklace link. The next example is torus, uh, torus link. Uh, that's the case we mainly consider in this talk. Actually, it is uh, unparalleled copies of, of, a, of a torus knot or for type PQ. Here, PQ are two co-primes integers, and we assume that they, they are both no less than two. Uh, there are some ways to construct a torus link. Uh, for our purpose, we uh, use the four parallel copies of three, two, not as an example to show one of the construction. Uh, first, uh, we decompose as three as a union of two copies of solid torus tx and ty here xy also represent their core circles inside and 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 we take the first solid torus we draw a three two knot on the boundary of tx just as the picture on the left show here two vertical edges of this rectangle represent the meridian slope of the boundary uh, while well, two vertical edges represent the longitude slope of the boundary. And the right line represents the three, two knots on this torus. So it intersects with the 
meridian meridian slope uh, three times, and it intersects with the 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 long uh, the this long uh, the longitude slope uh, twice. And the next, uh, we shrink the boundary of the solid torus T x uh, inside this solid torus towards the core x a little bit. So we will get a copy of a torus inside this solid torus. And we repeat this process another three times. We will get four copies of torus uh, inside, this, inside the solid torus T x. And the intersection between the meridian disk of, of solid torus Tx and these four uh, torus uh, is as shown by uh, is shown by the picture in the middle. Here, uh, the dashed circle. These four dashed circles represent the intersection between the meridian disk and the four torus inside. And on each this. On, on each of these four torus, there's a three to knot. So they together form uh, four parallel copies of uh, three to torus. And what this what, what, what this link looks like in the in the other solid torus is shown by the picture on the right. I mean, we can expand the the, the right solid torus a little bit such that it contains all, contains the link. And this is an intersection between the meridian disk of the four torus we defined before. Since, uh, and this and the point in the middle represent the intersection between the meridian disk and the X cone. So uh, maybe, you know, just to explain the picture on the right. So if you, if you have, you know, a PQ torus not n copies, so you have have this n dotted circle, and yeah. then on the left you have p points. Uh, yeah. Well, you have p, you know, uh, this you know arcs, and then the other will be q. So that's the three numbers, p, q, n show up in this picture. Yes. Go ahead. And. The Goldsmith product theorem that uh, the motion of torus link are generated by three kinds of motions: sigma i, rho i, and two pi. Two pi is just the the the, the, gener the generator of the Zimmer two z group we define we can we talk about it before. And sigma i, uh, we consider what this motion looks like on the disk uh, on the meridian disk of. The, of the solid torus Ty. Actually, rho i rotate the ice, the ice component by 2 pi over q. And in this case, q is 2. So this angle is 2 pi over 2, which is pi. And sigma i interchange the ice component and with i plus 1 component, as this picture shows. And, and then these motions satisfies the following relations. Actually, sigma i satisfies the, the relation in a braid group. And the first three relations actually just the relations in surface braid group of uh, annulus with unmarked points. And from this, and from the last relation, we found that when p plus q is odd, uh, the two pi is trivial. But when two but and when p plus q is even, two pi is non-trivial in this group. So that's a motion group of torus link. Uh, next, I will consider the representation uh, from now on when I say a motion group. I just means a motion group of a link in three sphere. Uh, so in this part, I will talk about the representation of a motion group from one extended diagram written topological quantum field theory. Uh, first, uh, given a four three two extended TQFT uh, Z, we can always define a family representation of a motion group of a link in S three by considering the cylinder two bothersome coming from the 
elements in the mapping class group of a pair as, uh, as a three sphere and L. Uh, generally, uh, this representation is hard to compute, but for some simple case, like uh, the, the, the extended TQFT is untwisted, diagraph written TQFT, and with pure flux labels, this representation actually is just a permutation on a chosen basis and computable for some links. Uh, before I give the specific definition for this for this representation, uh, to make the content complete, I will say some generous thing. Uh, for a uh, one extended 432 diagraph written theory, we need a label set. Uh, uh, we, we, uh, when we construct the uh, when we construct the the vector space for us for a three manifold with a boundary, we need a label set to label the boundary component of this three manifold. And let G be a finite group and let sigma B be a closed boundary two manifold and B is a base point of a sigma. So the label set consists of the of the pairs uh, bracket rho and alpha. Here bracket rho is a conjugate class of a homomorphism from the fundamental group sigma to finite group G. And alpha is an irreducible representation of the centralizer, the image of rho inside G, of the uh, inside G, uh, up to conjugation. That's the label set for this TQFT. And let Y be uh, a connected three manifold uh, with boundary components, sigma i, b i, and labeled by bracket rho i and alpha i respectively. And so regardless of this conceptual co construction here, we want to construct a representation of the centralizer of, of, of the, uh, here for every, I mean, for, for, for every homomorphism from the fundamental group of Y to the finite group G. We want to construct a representation of the centralized of the centralized of the image of rho in G. We want, to, we want to define a representation of this group, and we can do this uh, by consider the, the bracket of all of the re representations, re all of the representations, R for I, which are labeled the boundary of Y. And then next, we can construct this vector space. Actually, if we use uh, row I and R for I to label the boundary of Y, we can construct, uh, we can define the vector space to, uh, we can define the vector space as follows. Here, rho is a homeomorphism from the fundamental of Y to finite group. And this sum is overall the conjugacy of this homeomorphism such that the restriction of this map on the boundary of Y equals the, equals is, equals the, the labels equals the, the corresponding labels. And the T row is a trivial component of the representation we constructed before. Actually, this vector space is the representation space we consider. And when all the representation R for I, R for I are trivial representations, which are called pure flux labels, this, this vector space is just isomorphic to the space spanned by all the conjugate class of rho. Next, we define the action of motion group on this vector space. Here, we let i to be the uh, to be the complement of L in three sphere, and for any element in motion group bracket H, so uh, its image under the homomorphism partial we defined before inside the mapping class group of pair three sphere and L induces a map in this mapping class group of pairs, Y and its boundaries. And, and since we just consider the motion that preserves the orientation of links, so the bracket H1Y preserves the orientation of the boundary of Y. So, this, map, this, this element has action on the label set and induces an isomorphism 
between the corresponding vector spaces. And when this label is invariant, we can obtain uh, isomorphism on the same vector space. That's how we define the uh, representation of a motion group. And for pure, pure flux labels, the action reduced to permutation on the, home, the, the conjugate class of homeomorphism row by pre-composition. That's the representation we consider. Now I will show the, the calculation of this representation for torus link 3 to n. Actually, we know that the action is just the permutation on the, on the conjugacy class of homeomorphism from fundamental group to a finite group. So to compute this representation, uh, all we need is to compute the action of the motion group on the fundamental group of the complement of the link in three sphere. So first, we give a presentation for complement of this torus link. Actually, uh, we, uh, we choose B to be a base point of the complement of this link. Then we have, we have a presentation for this fundamental group. Uh, for the first presentation, there are four generators. They satisfy this uh, rela uh, relator, uh, satisfy, they satisfy these relations. And we can simplify this presentation to the lower one. I mean, we can remove VI to get this presentation. And I will use a picture to show how do we get these four generators. Here we use the construction for the torus link. We construct a, a, a bow. Uh, uh, recall that uh, the intersection between the meridian disk and the torus knot are some dot. So after we remove the tor remove the torus link from three sphere, we can extend. So each dot becomes a small hole. So we can extend each small hole to the solid circle, as this picture shows. And we will construct a two complex inside the complement of torus link, as this picture shows. And here, this. Uh, first, we will get, uh, for this case, we will get three uh, torus uh, inside the complement, inside the complement of the torus. And the next, the right line actually uh, forms a cylinder inside the complement. And since on this meridian, they are, uh, for, for the intersection point of the X corn and the meridian disk, it, it is a trivalent graph. So for X corns, this is on the on this end, the cylinder attached, a cylinder is attached to X corns three times. And on the other side, the, the other end of the cylinder is attached to Y corns twice. That's how we get this two complex. And AI is just the loop, it's just this, it's just this big, big, a big solid circle, and the BI is a is a natural meridian circle, and the UI equals AI times BI, and the VI equals AI times BI square. That's how we get this presentation. And the next, uh, we compute the action of motion group on this presentation uh, formula. It can be shown by this by these equations. Uh, actually, we can use a picture to show how do we get these relations. Uh, in the complement of torus link in three sphere, we can construct a cylinder. Uh, actually, this cylinder comes from all the one one knots uh, inside the solid torus Tx. I mean, uh, we choose all the torus parallel to the boundary of, uh, we choose the, all the uh, torus inside inside the Tx, which 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 are parallel to the boundary of Tx, and on each of these torus, there there's a one one knot. We use all of them to conform a cylinder. So on this so so on this cylinder, the circle inside is the corn x, and the circle outside is the corn y. 
And we know that since the intersection between 3, 2, naught and 1, 1, naught is 1. So on this cylinder, uh, each component of this torus length intersects with this cylinder only once. We have four points. Each point corresponds to one component of this torus link. And the, the, uh, and the two motions act on this cylinder, as this picture shows. For rho, he rotate this dot uh, by 2 pi. And for sigma, sigma interchange these two points. It just interchange these two points. So that's how we get the action of the motion group on the representation we have before. Now we can consider the vector space of representation. Uh, the labels, since we just consider the pure flux labels, so we can just, so we just need to consider the conjugate class of the homomorphism from the fundamental group of boundary to finite group. Since the, the boundary of Y is just a torus, so this label set just consists of an equivalence class that for any commuting pair, GH in G times G, uh, we say G1, H1 is equivalent to G2, H2. If they are conjugate, they, they, are, conjugate, they are conjugated to each other by one element G in, in big G. And to, since we know that to, 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 to obtain the representation of a motion group, we need the labels invariant under the action of motion group. So, and we know that the motion group permutes the components of all, uh, permutes all the components of a torus link. So to make the labels on each, to make the labels on each component, is in, to make the labels on the boundaries are invariant under this action. We need to use only one, one element G, H to label each component of this torus link. And under this label, we can have a representation for the vector space, for the corresponding vector space. Actually, we can find a representative as this shows here, x, y represent the image of the generator x, y under the, under the morphism rho, and u, i is the image of, is the image of the circle u, i under the homomorphism rho. And AI is what we use to label the to label an arc connecting the base point and the, the base point of the home manifold to the base point on the boundary. And they satisfies these conditions. Now we want to relate this calculation with the with the representation of a surface break group, also from diagraph weighting theory. Uh, since uh, now we can uh, let K be a cylinder and P1 from P, P1 to Pn, uh, N points on K. Then the motion group of a Pi in this cylinder is a surface group of uh, annulus. So it is generated by two kinds of motions, sigma i and rho i. Here rho, rho i just rotated this dot by two pi and sigma i is just to interchange the i's point and i, I plus one point. And they satisfy these relations. And we found that they are part of the relations for the motion group of a torus link in three sphere. And also from three to one extended diagraph weighting theory, let H be a finite group. Uh, we use here, we use GI to denote, to, to, to label each point on this annulus. And we use GX to label the X boundary of this cylinder, and we use the GY to label the, the to label the Y boundary of this annulus. Under these labels, we have this presentation for the corresponding vector spaces, and these elements satisfies these conditions. And after comparing, we found that this row is just what we get for the motion group of torus link. Now we construct two sets here. 
uh, for any bracket X and bracket Y in bracket G here, uh, bracket G is the set of the conjugate class of G. So for any of these two elements in the conjugate class of G, we can construct the two sets SXY and FXY. Here, SX, SXY actually it is a, a subset of the generating set for the vector space. And FXY can be, can be regarded as the basis for the vector space of the annulus uh, with Z, uh, Y0 square as a structure group and the corresponding labels. Here, Z, Y, Z, Z, Y0 square is just a centralizer of Y0 square in the group, in the big, in the group big G. And we can construct a bijection between these two sets. And what's more, uh, this set, the set S, X, Y is invariant under the action of a motion group of torus link in three sphere. So the vector space spanned by this set is an invariant subspace under the motion, under the, under the action of motion group of torus link in three sphere. Now we can get this commuting diagram here. Uh, since the relations, the relations for the surface group, surface break group of a cylinder is part of the, is part of the relations for torus uh, motion group of a torus link in three sphere. So we will get a natural inclusion from the surface braid group to the motion group of a torus link in three sphere, and these two vertical arrows are the representation maps from. Uh, from three plus from three plus one diagraph weighting theory and the two plus one diagraph weighting theory respectively, and this vertical line is the bijection we constructed before. Uh, according to the construction, this is a commuting diagram, and what's more, uh, the image, the image of the image of the representation map from three plus one diagraph diagraph weighting theory, is just the image uh, from this path. And now we can decompose the representation of a motion group of torus link in three sphere in this way. I mean, for each bracket X and the bracket Y, uh, the vector space spanned by S, X, Y is a invariant subspace. Now uh, it has this decomposition and each sub and each invariant subspace correspond to the representation of Correspond to the representation of a surface break group of an annulus and their list labels and with the centralizer of y0 square in G as structure group. That's our main result. Uh, that's all my talk. Thank you. Yeah, can I ask a question in, in the uh, previous sure. uh, in the previous sure. slide? So here you mentioned from a three plus one D uh, to uh, to two plus one D uh, diagram with yeah. written theory. Yeah, yeah, I simply wonder if is this uh, the uh, dimension uh, re reduction? Um, yeah, uh, it is. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, is this like the dimension reduction uh, in physics? <laughs> uh, I, I I don't I don't I don't know I. Uh, I yeah, just yeah, tried to find out the physics uh, terminology. The answer is almost yes, but not quite. Uh, so, you know, he didn't give references, but I should say there are lots of computations in physics, like Xiaogang wrote a paper, I think I recited, you know, he did for the torus, uh, there's a reduction, uh, emission reduction, which I think we reproduce in another part of the paper. So, uh, Maybe let's explain two things. Uh, so uh, one thing is, uh, I believe, which is what we conjectured, that the motion group representation can always be described using dimension reduction uh, of two plus one, as we do you know, the theory we, we had. But the theory we have right now is not what I really consider dimension reduction for the following reason. Uh, so, so here, uh, 
you know, I don't expect you guys know too much topology, but let me just say, you know, what the dimension reduction should be, and then what our theorem is. So uh, the dimension reduction should be, you know, most probably the easiest way to describe would be suppose you have a uh, link of n components that the component is the same knot. You know, the case we are interested in the trifle knot. So suppose you have a link which has n components, each component is the same knot, and they are all parallel in a certain sense. Uh, and then let's further assume that each knot is something uh, like a fiber knot or something. Uh, which means that it's bound a surface and the manifold will be sliced into the surfaces. And then the natural gas of dimension reduction would be the motion group representation from three plus one two kept T, probably all of them can be described using the representation of the, the surface, uh, the fiber surface with a certain complicated, you know, uh, determination of the labels. So that's what I would call dimension reduction. You know, just like the easiest case would be three torus, you just slice into two torus and then dimension reduction. But we couldn't do that actually. So our theorem is kind of a, a compromise. It's like a dimension reduction to two dimension, but not quite right. So let me just give you kind of the most, you know, important picture in this theorem. So, so here is the picture in, for this theorem. So you take the three sphere, and if you want to think about three manifolds, the first thing you want to know is the three sphere can be written as, you know, the disjoint union, well, the glue of a two solid torus. And uh, that's what he drew in the picture. And there are two, uh, you know, the solid torus is a slice of torus and then you go down to a circle. So you should think this basically a torus cross I, the interval, and then at the very end you have degenerating into a circle. So this theorem is not using the, you know, the fiber of a vibration. What we are using is that if you think about the three sphere as a whole collection of torus across the interval and then at the two end of the interval, they degenerate to a two circle, so that x, y in his picture. And then you have a cylinder in this picture, which is on each torus, you take the diagonal circle, the diagonal circle, which is the one-one curve. And at each level of the torus, you take this one-one curve, and then as you go to the two core curve. And that's what they will degenerate to because this diagonal at one end will go to the meridian, at the other end will go to the longitude. Yeah. And then what we describe the theorem, the cylinder is this cylinder. Ah. And then we reduce the three plus one representation into the braid group representation of this cylinder, which is the annulus, which is not exactly what I want to all physicists would think. Uh, That's the dimension reduction. But we yeah. do believe the answer could be written as the other way, but it's not obvious to us. I see. Yeah, it seems to me that in physics, um, the dimension reduction is somehow from T3 to T2. Here, here you are from S3. Well, that's, that's what I'm saying. That relies yeah. on your manifold has a uh, a vibration structure. Uh, uh, I um, so that's actually it's always true. We prove we prove the dimension reduction for closed manifold. Uh, so the mapping class group representation for closed three manifold of the form a surface cross S1. That's always can be done. That's actually is already true actually. Uh, I see. What we are do what he talk about is the case of links, the motion group. Uh, and uh, that's actually hard. I think the I think we have, I think you guys have a, probably have a guess, and we have a guess too, which is how to get a label 
for the two plus one to KFT from the three plus one label. Uh, so it's definitely much more complicated than I would imagine, but uh, it's probably true if you formula. I think the difficulty is the formulation rather than the proof. You know, what's the correct dimension reduction for links inside the three manifold? Hey, I can't. Uh, I guess a moment.